speak here at a Design for Life uh, conference. Design for Life is really a great theme because it's actually, to a certain degree, what we've been trying to do with Renault, putting life uh, and humans at the center of our activity. So the theme, Design for Life, is very close to the values uh, of our company. Renault, as you know, uh, is a company that's been around for a long time. But I think it's in a really exciting time in the car industry because nothing will be the same as it has been for the last 100 years. I think the next 10 years, we will look back at this period in time thinking that this was a time of great revolution. There's new trends coming at us at high speed, technical revolutions, digital revolutions, connectivity, and this has, will have an impact, uh, an enormous impact, I would say, on the design of mobility and on our cars. I thought I'd start uh, with a um, uh, design strategy to give you some insight into our design strategy and you will see why Design for Life is so relevant for us and how we have embraced this theme and then I will share with you some of our new concepts for future mobility. Now, a design strategy is really important uh, because it communicates what you want to be about. Uh, it communicates the value of a brand. So as a design director, in my case, it's important to know what you want to communicate. And to give you an example of uh, how this could work, I want to show you two airlines, and you're going to tell me which one you want to fly with. So who wants to fly with the airline on the right? <laughs> Raise your hand, there's no right or wrong, okay? Who wants to fly with the airline on the left? Okay, so the airline on the right had some issues. It had a very good security record, but it couldn't get its message across. So they hired a, an advertising agency, and three months and three million euro later, they designed this. Now my question is, do you feel a little bit safer? <laughs> Does everyone feel safer? Yes. So clearly, there is a disconnect between what you see and what you read. And you tend to believe what you see because 80% of our communication is visual. So the visual part is much stronger than what you read. Now what you read, I call brand strategy. So what do we want to communicate as a brand? What you see, the painting, is the cars we make, the products you make, is the design strategy. And it's obviously key that those two are in sync. On the left, you see a good brand and design strategy. On the right, you see a good brand strategy, but a bad design strategy. Now, when I came to Renault in 2009, as Anne mentioned, Renault design was lost a little bit, had lost its track. So it was really important for us to find our way back. So if I, what we did is we need to refine our soul. The soul, we tried to come back to what are we about as a car manufacturer. Now, there's three types of brands. I like to play it simple. You have the brands on the left that are car-centric. These brands play on performance, on horsepower, on technology, cars for engineers by engineers, if you will. You have brands that are more planet-centric, that want to improve the world, more Asian brands you can find in this category. And there's a third category of brands that are human-centric, that put the human in the center of its activity. This is where you find Renault, but here you could also find a brand like Volvo or Citroën. Car, human, planet. So, when we looked at Renault with human-centric brands, the values that we talked about were about life. Voiture à vivre. Some of you might recall this signature from uh, the 90s, cars for living. And the key for us became to link these values with the types of vehicles we make. So we make iconic vehicles like a Twingo, we make crossovers like Coleos, we make family cars, we make commercial vehicles, we make sports cars, and we also make electric vehicles. And to tie all this together and link them to values of life and humans, we came up with the idea of a cycle of life. For instance, life starts with falling in love. This could be uh, an iconic car like a Twingo or a Clio. Then you found your love, you, you, you've, you're curious, you want to explore the world, you follow your curiosity. This could become crossovers. Things are going well with the couple, you start a family, family cars like a Scenic. You need to work commercial vehicles, sometimes you want to play, run a sport with or without your kids, and then you have wisdom. 
If you accumulate all your experiences, wisdom, this could be a more innovative vehicles like hybrids, electric, etc. And this way, we were able to link all our vehicles with a stage in life of our customers. So if you've fallen in love, we have a car for you. If you want to start a family, we have a car for you. We started to explore this, not just on paper, but we created six concept cars at the time, in, from 2010 to 2016, to explore these themes. So a red sports car for falling in love for two people, because you don't fall in love with three. A, an espace that is very modern, aerodynamic, hybrid, etc., for wisdom. We also introduced a lot of colors because I think as a designer we need to make life more beautiful, more colorful, more worth living, more valor valorizing. And we introduced a form language that was very sensual and warm and Latin, very dynamic. And obviously the key of a concept car is that it's a promise for the future. And the ambition was for us to translate this promise into reality. And this is the lineup that you see on the road today if you, uh, if you look around. We even managed to keep the, uh, the launch colors, we even managed to keep this family feeling very clearly in the street today. And our signature went from voiture à vivre to passion for life. So this is why I said it's such a good mix for us to be here today, designing for life, but with a lot of passion because we're French. Not me, but we are, of course, as a company. <laughs> Now, when I look at our visions for future mobility, we continued on this road. We finished one cycle in life. Life is circular, like a helix, like the DNA. And we thought for the second go around, now that we have established our brand, we can actually concentrate on more experimental concepts, more explorative concepts, more concepts that will tackle the, the, the issues of future mobility that is coming at us at such a hard pace. But we wanted to nonetheless start with a car to fall in love again. And we used this time the idea of the, the jewelry box. Maybe some of you have had this moment in life where somebody opens up a box and there's a ring inside and this idea of getting proposed. Something for a couple of five years that have been knowing each other for uh, a couple of years. So for this we designed a vehicle Trésor. Trésor is a vehicle that opens up uh, like the jewelry box that I just showed, it's for two people who are going on a long weekend. It's, it's not very practical, <laughs> but love isn't very practical in that sense. And when you're inside, you're sitting really in a, warm, in a warm bubble. This car was a, if you will, a design statement of beauty. Then we looked at our sports vision, and late last year we designed an F1 for the future, where also uh, the human, the pilot, is at the center of the activity. So it's right in between the four wheels. The car is transparent, so you can actually see the driver. Even the helmet of the driver was transparent. The car is a, a, a hybrid uh, with electric. It has four-wheel steering. It has even autonomous drive for when it enters in a pits or when it needs to escape or when there is a situation of a yellow flag. So even in something as extreme as Formula One, you can incorporate the values of our brand. And then two projects on which I want to have a particular zoom, one that we showed in Frankfurt Motor Show last year, Symbios, and the second one come in a minute. The first one, Symbios, was a vision on personal mobility, where you still own the car, where you still uh, buy the car, if you will. Up until now, the car was always conceived as a separate element, a little bit outside of your life, and we thought the car in the future will become an integral part of your ecosystem. Your ecosystem might be your house, your life, your smartphone, all the objects around you. So we designed this car not in isolation, but as part of your system of life. And when it's part of your system, obviously, it will share information because it can connect itself with all the elements around you. It will share the same space, but it will also share energy. For instance, if the car uh, is connected to the house, it can charge the house or the house can charge the car as needed. So symbios, the idea of connecting two objects and that profit from each other, if you will, without damaging each other, for this was quite an interesting uh, project because this car was also able to 
uh, allow you to go into more of an autonomous mode, electric of course, and also connected. Now these three words, autonomous, electric, connected, you will hear them a lot from every single car manufacturer because this is where the world is pulling us into. The key is now, what does every brand do with it? You know, how do you interpret these challenges? So for the Symbios, we decided you can drive this car, but you can also choose to let yourself be driven. The steering wheel folds away. You can look uh, uh, at the screen, transforms itself to look at a movie, have some fun, or just relax. The car has multiple configurations. So you can be an active driver, or the car can transform itself, and you can allow yourself uh, to be driven. The car really switches to, to a full autonomous mode. And once it's in full autonomous mode, the car is not a traditional car anymore. It becomes kind of a living room on wheels. So we started to design it like a living room. We worked together with uh, Alexandra Gatza, who is a famous material designer on uh, the materials for the car. We designed the house as well, together with Marquee Architects. Quite unusual for a car design team to also get our hands into architecture. But I think it shows the, uh, the trend that in the future we won't be isolated anymore, but we will do many more collaborations, more than ever before. We worked with uh, Philips Lighting for the lighting of the house, so when the car arrives, it can start to communicate with the house, so the house starts to uh, signal its attention. You can see if the house uh, is off, you can only see a little eye uh, pulsing. And because the car is electric, you can park it inside. Now, this is, I admit, a car designer's dream. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure this is on your list, of, uh, on your Christmas list of, uh, of everyone here, but as personal, I would, I would love to be able to park my car in my house. One of my uh, worst parts of the day is if I have to go to a parking garage three floors down to pick up my car and drive out. This is costing me 15 minutes, and it's really annoying. So, if the car is very, very intelligent, very clean, very, it's, a, it's a piece of high tech, why would you park it elsewhere? And you can see that there's many things that you do in a car, actually, that you don't do in your house. Some people talk to their kids uh, in a car, which they might not do at home. Some people listen to music or, or escape mentally. Uh, a car is an, is, a, is an interesting environment. I think we underestimate the particular things that you do in a car, and why not valorize this more? In fact, cars are only used 9% of the time. So if it were an extension of your house, it could actually uh, become uh, uh, an enrichment of your daily life. Now, when the car uh, is electric and connected and autonomous, it could park itself. So one of the things we did is we, we, have, we had the car go up with an elevator and it could park itself on the roof of the house so you could use the space for other activities. Now to give you an idea of what this would look like in a movie, please have a look. So Symbios as our vision of Renault on personal mobility. Now, 
The second project, which I think is interesting, is mobility services. This is a complementary uh, element of, mo of mobility, which is only possible because the, the technology now allows us to go into this direction. And this is the idea that you make a car without a driver, without a steering wheel, without pedals, as a service. And you'll be able to access this vehicle just uh, through your smartphone, and you can order it at any point in time that you want. Now, when you're doing a project like this, what's interesting is there is no reference. And I can tell you, in my 25 years in the car industry, I've never had a truly white sheet of paper. It never exists. And here, when we asked for what is the reference, what can we build on, what can we improve, there was nothing. So we had to invent our way. And when you're talking about a car without a driver, is it still a car? Is it a piece of architecture? Is it just a piece of a city uh, on four wheels? Um, and to give ourselves a, a, a frame, we said, OK, let's make it a shared vehicle. Let's make it iconic, because people think we'll just be driving in washing machines on wheels. And I think this would be a real shame if, if, if we become just a, a piece of public transport with sliding doors, and, and we are moved in this. So let's make it iconic, four to six people, autonomous drive. Let's make it zero emission, ZE. Uh, not more than 50 kilometers an hour, not necessary in a city. So you don't need any seat belts, gives you more freedom four-wheel steering, and everything through a smartphone. We started with a car with the wheels on the corners, very spacious, very iconic, different seating configurations, obviously an electric uh, platform on which we could build multiple variations, and the idea of the iconic car, a window to the world, uh, a car that lets you discover the city in, in new ways. Uh, a little bit inspired by Lost in Translation, where the girl sits by the window and looks out over Tokyo. This vehicle would also be autonomous, so it needs to know what's going on around it. So it has a LiDAR system, plus radars and sensors around it. This is, explains also the trapezoidal shape of the car, because it needs to be able to see very close to the perimeter of the vehicle. It also, and here is, it becomes interesting, because it's a vehicle for which there were no uh, presets, we wanted to make sure that this was mobility for all, for all kinds of people. The advantage of autonomous driving is you don't need a driving license, so it's for kids, for older people, people that cannot move easily. And I think something really important is that you enter a car standing up. So we made the, the, the front of the vehicle opening up, and this became the entrance of the car has two advantages. First, you don't have to bend over to get in the car, which is obviously a very strange movement. And second, if you have a wheelchair, if you have a pram, if you have a luggage, you can just walk in, put it down, and get inside. This allows you to also not to get out on the side of the car, because one of the things that might be dangerous is if you're driving an autonomous vehicle, it stops on the road and you get out and the traffic comes from the side. So in this sense, if one frontal opening was very, very interesting. Now here you see some pictures when we shot the car in Barcelona, and it was amazing to see the reactions of the people around it, because it, it brought a smile to their faces. And once you go in, on the center, on the front of the opening, you sit, you sit around it. So it's a very social type of environment. The interior of the car is quite functional. There's no need for screens everywhere, because when we talk to mobility providers, they said what people do in the, in the Ubers, etc. they look on their smartphone 10 minutes, and then they get out. So there's really no reason to surround you with all kinds of uh, screens and, and connectivity. But the car is very transparent. You create this connection with the city around you. And you can actually see people inside. There's two ways to create a, a feeling of security in a vehicle. is first of all, by protecting you completely, or by creating complete transparency. And both ways work. And the second way is obviously the one that we chose for this vehicle. We could imagine this vehicle to become what a black cap is in London, or what a yellow cap is in, in New York really a vehicle to, to become an iconic, uh, forward-looking, progressive statement of intent. So here's a, an image of the video.
every day I look at the city around me. I see it growing, trying to evolve with the seasons. I see those who don't see it anymore, and others who are trying to take in the beauty. Some see it as an immense playground. It has the power to move me, even becoming an expressive landscape. I know that I'm not alone in drawing inspiration from it, and sheltered from view, some are trying to make it better. So, two illustrations of our vision for mobility for the future. We are not done yet, we will do more this year and next year. The fact that we are doing this at this point in time shows you how incredibly exciting it is to try to come up with answers to new problems that we have never faced before. We don't pretend to know all the answers. These are really concepts to spark discussions, to find out, to make mistakes, to experiment, and to make sure that we end up uh, with a better world and that we design for a better life. So. Thank you very much for your attention.